Hello, I'm Batuan. I'd like to briefly talk about my project I prepared for my digital design course in BCAT. In this project, I designed a 16-bit processor capable of running instructions from memory, and it's currently implemented for the basis free board. And the processor has several input and output peripherals available to it. The main output is through the VGA port available on the board, and the device can also take input from a gamepad connected through the PMOT pins on the board. I only have the first one connected here, but the device can also control the second gamepad connected to this empty port, which is useful for designing programs or games for multiple users. The device internally contains separate modules achieving different goals, and probably the most critical for the design is the processing unit, which contains all the logic for interpreting and carrying out instructions. The processor can only access a 16-bit memory space, and I'll talk about it in greater detail in a moment. There are also different modules for communicating with external devices, like the video module, which drives the VGA output, or the gamepad controllers, which keep track of the buttons of the gamepads. The design uses a memory-mapped input and output model, so each of these secondary modules are assigned locations on the memory space for the CPU to use, using memory mappers. The processor is designed to have a constant instruction size of 16 bits, which greatly simplifies the programming process, and it is clocked at 100 MHz, although higher clock speeds are possible for different applications. Um, the processor has 16 internal registers, and it assumes a unified memory, meaning it doesn't use separate memories for program and data. Currently, the best way to program the processor is through a simple assembler written in Java. The assembler supports constants and simple name resolution, so it, it helps speeding up the programming process. And when given an in input like this, it generates bit values to be loaded onto the memory of the device and be executed by the processor. The processor has a total of 35 instructions shown here, and each has a mnemonic assigned used when writing programs in assembly. Um, it has basic arithmetic instructions and control flow operations, and you can see that it also has stack operations on the top right corner. These increase the flexibility of the system when programming, allowing greater abstractions like procedure calls. And finally, you can see that it does not have a division operation. Um, this can be compensated for using the shift and rotate operations, which nevertheless provide more efficiency in general usage. As I mentioned before, the processor can have 16 registers. The first 13 of these, shown in the first two rows, are identical general purpose registers, but for convenience, the first six are designated to be used as accumulators, while the next seven are used within processors or for passing parameters to functions quickly. A special register is used for storing the higher 16 bits of a multiplication result, and two registers are used as a stack pointer and for the program counter. The bottom two registers are not li addressable directly, but are used and modified by some other instructions. And the stack, in particular, is initialized from a higher address and grows downwards, allowing a vertical maximum size of about 65,000 bytes. The size of the stack should be large enough to make a C compiler for the device possible. The processor supports four straightforward addressing modes used by different instructions. Uh, firstly, most instructions can take an immediate value of 6 or 10 bits depending on the type. And larger values have to be constructed using multiple instructions. Also, memory addresses can be specified directly when loading any value from memory or writing to the memory. And thirdly, some instructions have also relative addressing, for example, a branch operation related to the program counter. And finally, the memory address to be read or written can be specified by the contents of another register, uh, which is essential for quickly traversing a memory range. And again, the memory addresses available to the processor are assigned to different input and output devices. 
So in my implementation, the lower half of the addresses are used for random access memory, while the higher half is used for communications with like external devices through read and write operations. For example, reading from the memory location of a gamepad will return a 16-bit word indicating the state of each button of the gamepad, while writing to the address of the onboard LEDs will change which ones are lit and which ones are off depending on the value written. However, the video output of the device is slightly more involved. In order to save memory space and processing time, an indexing system was developed. At any given time, the video module has a color palette of at most 16 colors, and each of these has a 4-bit ID number from 0 to 15. The video module also has a tile palette of at most 64 different tiles, which can be drawn on the screen. Each of these tiles is 32 by 32 pixels, and each pixel is stored in memory referring to the color IDs in the color palette. This way, each color can be referred to multiple times, greatly reducing memory requirements. Finally, each 32 by 32 square on the screen is assigned a tile number to be drawn there. Using these values, the video module generates the effective color at each pixel on the screen, producing the required result. And finally, I'd also like to talk about possible ways to further develop the project. Um, firstly, writing programs for the system can get problematic very quickly right now as the size of the code increases because there aren't any proper debugging tools for the platform. This can be solved by writing a simulator for the system for desktop PCs or by designing a debugging entity internal to the system which could provide breakpoints and memory dumps. Next, the relatively flexible instruction set and the large stack size of the device makes the possibility of a higher level language compiler promising. Um, for example, a C compiler could be written for the system. And finally, since the processor has no internal assumption on the video output mechanism, a more vers versatile ways of generating video could be added, possibly featuring more dynamic elements. I'd like to finish with an example game written for the device. Um, here I have an implementation of the classical puzzle game Sokoban. The goal in the game is to push all the boxes into the blue squares using the yellow character. The character is controlled using the arrow keys on the gamepad. The game is written using the assembler and takes about 400 bytes in memory and has three levels currently implemented.